Hey everyone, as the US election draws closer, the country appears more divided than ever. More divided than that flat pack desk does. Turns out I never got around to assembling this weekend. It's made a number of commentators ask though, what would Abraham Lincoln or George Washington be doing if they were alive today? To which the obvious answer is scratching at the inside of the coffin, shouting, let me out of here. And I guess Abraham Lincoln might be looking up that play on Wikipedia to see how it ended, seeing as he missed the last 20 minutes of it. But yes, it's two months until the election day as we move into the autumn, or as they call it in America, the fall, which brings to mind other falls like the fall of Saigon, the fall of the Roman Empire, or that time that Neil Kinnock fell over on a beach. Because just like Kinnock, the US left-wing politicians have been trying incredibly hard to make themselves seem as unelectable as possible over the last couple of weeks. As an analogy, try to imagine the fictional kingdom run by Babar the Elephant. And now try to imagine that the hunter is running for political office in it, and possibly his running mate is a zookeeper. You know, that's roughly what you have with left-wing mayors championing the Apple of police and urging you to vote for Joe Biden to speed up that process. Democratic strongholds like Los Angeles and New York are now deserted downtown and regularly witnessed to scenes reminiscent of the third world. And yet for many people that's portrayed as a good thing with references being made to South Africa and the end of white minority rule as people actively fan the flames of a race war that frankly matters very little to anyone who doesn't have a financial stake in it all. When Democrats say that the country needs immigrants to do the things that ordinary Americans won't, it makes you wonder, like what, voting Democrat? All the while, Joe Biden's been silent on the topic of the riots and so uninspiring that you half wonder whether making him the front runner was part of a make-a-wish event, you know, like when they let a terminally ill patient have lunch with their favourite sporting hero. It's worth remembering that Joe only even got the position because the party stooges wouldn't allow the role to go to Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton wouldn't let Elizabeth Warren beat her in the competition to the White House as the first female president. The somewhat confusing yet inevitable way that the vote was rigged meant that the party activists voted for competence and charisma and got left with Joe Biden. And for many, it's a bit like if you ordered a double bed and the company delivered you a double bass. Except that double basses are associated with jazz and are cool, whereas Joe seems like the kind of guy who'd go to a concert and then complain afterwards that the orchestra was a cover band. Who knows, maybe he's been around long enough to see Mozart play a live gig back in the day. Either way, we've currently got nine weeks to go until we get to see which of the two old white men, both with accusations of impropriety, both running on a campaign of identity politics, gets to live in the White House next year. Oh, and possibly a three subsequent years, depending on how the news goes. Anyway, see you next week. Like these, click subscribe. Bye.